This is liquid CO2 right before it reaches its supercritical point. The most fascinating part about watching a liquid turn supercritical for me is that before the supercritical point, there's obviously a liquid below with a gas above, separated by a line or a meniscus. But once it turns supercritical, that line just kind of fades away and it becomes one state, a supercritical fluid. But this gave me an idea and raised a question in my mind. If the line just kind of goes away, then what would happen if there was a boat floating on the surface of the liquid right when it turns supercritical. What happens to the boat? Does it just stay right where it was floating before? Or would it now float to the top since the whole tank is now filled? Or would it sink to the bottom because there's no layer of liquid to float on? Well, today I'm gonna to be testing this out by actually floating a small styrofoam boat in liquid CO2 and then heating it to its supercritical point. In order to do this, I have to contain a lot of pressure. The supercritical point of CO2 is at 73 atmospheres, which means I need to contain over a thousand pounds per square inch in my vessel. So to do that, I'm gonna be using this vessel here. It has two thick pieces of acrylic windows and I can bolt these together over the body that has a valve and a pressure gauge right here. This tank has been tested to over twice the pressure that I'm gonna to get to today, but it still makes me a little nervous using it getting to this high of a pressure. So to start off, we need some CO2. When it's solid, we call this dry ice. So I'll just grab some chunks of dry ice and put it in the vessel. Now I'll tighten these bolts and then close the valve. As soon as the pressure increases, the dry ice stops turning from a solid directly into a gas. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> but it can now turn into a liquid. So now we've got liquid CO2 in here. If I release the pressure, it freezes into solid CO2 again. Okay, so now let's do this for real. Let's put in our dry ice and I'm gonna add this half sphere of styrofoam to act as our boat floating in the liquid. Okay, now let's put our little boat in. Let's close it up. Okay, the styrofoam is very squished, but it is floating. Okay, now I'm heating it up. See if we can get to super critical pressure here. It'll be at around a thousand PSI. Okay, we're above 500 PSI, or about halfway there. You can see there's still the meniscus there. It's not even cold anymore, <laughs> we're getting close. Okay, right now we're at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. We're waiting to get to around 87 degrees Fahrenheit. Look how the fluid splashes. We're getting very close to the supercritical state. Okay, here it goes. I'm gonna wiggle it a little bit, see what it looks like. Whoa, what is happening? It's like dripping from the top. It's condensing and dripping down. Look at that. It's like a waterfall. That is so weird. That means it's super critical on the right side, but then it's condensing back into a liquid on the left side, because the right side is where my heat is. So what's happening is the refractive index of the gas and the liquid are becoming the same. And so you don't see a meniscus or you don't see the light bend when it goes through the liquid. Even when I shake it, you don't see a real difference between the refractive indices. But you can still see the styrofoam floating on top. Uh-oh. The styrofoam is dipping deeper down in it now. Whoa, it's like disappearing, look. The line's disappearing. That meniscus is just going away, but the styrofoam's staying pretty similar place to where it was.
Okay, the line is literally going away. You can still see it disrupt the background though in this shot. So there's still slight meniscus there. But it's going away. Whoa, and it's kind of rising up above the surface of the styrofoam. Oh, the styrofoam sunk. It sunk down in the liquid. But now I can no longer see a meniscus on top. You can't really tell where the gas and the liquid separate from each other. Okay, it's fully supercritical now. Over a thousand PSI now. And the styrofoam is at the bottom. You can still see that it's being heated from the side there. So you can see some little waves happening from the hot fluid rising, but it's all super critical. There's no meniscus whatsoever. If I pick up the vessel and move it around, you can see that there isn't two states in here anymore. It's just one state that's a little viscous and the styrofoam can just fall through it slowly. Okay, now let's let it cool down a bit and it should revert from its super critical state into a liquid with gas above it again. And I think the styrofoam should float once again. Okay, I'm gonna put an ice cube on top. Oh, it disappears from view, gone. Oh, there it is. I saw it start to float. <laughs> And it's back on top. Look at that. <laughs> as soon as it's out of the supercritical phase, then it floats back on top of the meniscus. That is so cool. It's totally back on top. Okay, now I'm gonna release the pressure. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa. <laughs> oh, the, the styrofoam got sucked out the little tiny hole there. It tried to leave. Here's our styrofoam boat. It survived. That's where it tried to get sucked out of that little hole at the end. So why did this boat sink when it went super critical? Well, if you think about it, right before it turns super critical, there's a liquid on bottom and a gas on top. Since the boat is floating right on the surface of the meniscus, that means the average density of the boat is more dense than the gas, but less dense than the liquid. But then once it becomes supercritical, these two states suddenly become one. So it would make sense that the density of the remaining fluid should be some average of these two states. And sure enough, if you look up the density of liquid CO2, it's around 800 grams per liter at room temperature. But then once it reaches its critical point, it suddenly drops to just above 400 grams per liter. This average density is less dense than the boat's average density, so it sinks to the bottom. This would also be the case with any real boat that had an open top as well. So there we go, now we know that boats sink in supercritical fluids. So next time you're on a lake that suddenly turns super critical, be sure to get to shore quickly. For more practical tips like this, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and we'll see you next time.